Well, we're streaming right away. Boom. I've been sitting on the stream for an hour and 12 minutes, watching to see if, if anything unusual was happening to us. Nothing happened. It still wasn't a waste. And I caught a lot of comments to earlier and started <laughs> answering them, which I should do more often. And I just spent the last 10 minutes laughing at H. Thomas Ackerman's video that he popped out six hours ago. There's a link below to his site, by the way, now. That'll be there for now and too. And a few more people. Susan left a comment earlier tonight. I got a link under that and other people so you can go enjoy them when I put up these streams. Uh, and you're waiting and looking for more information. Check their site and see if they get any new videos up. New Brewer Magic, of course. Um, Miss Milky the Clown. Is there anybody I forgot? Let me know if you do. So I can check them out. And the point being is that, you know, one of these days in the near future, as the story comes out, you're going to see the numbers each day go. <laughs> And everybody like me is going to get buried. And hopefully it's buried by people like yourselves who have taken that extra step, got educated, and come out swinging. And people like Radchick. I mean, we can't all be magic like that, but we can use that as an unbelievable, incredible measuring stick. Because um, it shows you how effective knowledge is particularly when you take what they teach you and then you throw it back at them because they won't do their job. They're, you know, That's why we're here in the first place is because the people we were led to believe you know, that would inform us didn't do their jobs and can't do their jobs because what they do is they read a teleprompter and people just can't really wrap their mind around that. And it works kind of this way where AP and, and then Reuters, or Reuters and AP depending. It's one or the other will break a story. And then all the other media has uh, robots that will aggregate that up into their site. And they don't have to do nothing. They'll look and say, oh, Reuters just updated, or AP just updated her site for us. And they say, that's a big story. Let's try, let's get one of the Reuters on that and write up another story and keep the, let's get up on the ear in 10 minutes with that paragraph and that picture. And that's what makes it so important, is that all the media on the planet aggregate with these little bots onto their site, and then hence up into their TV land and radio lands. And uh, it's simple to throw out that little paragraph, news flash, you know. Um, and so everybody gets this image, and then every day at the water cooler or the supermarket and taxis and everywhere else, everybody has that same image and everybody has that same paragraph. And you don't understand why they got it, but when you say something, oh yeah, I heard all about it. And in reality, is no, they didn't, but they're trying to be friendly, it's well meaning, it seems innocuous, it's extraordinarily damaging and effective. Um, and so we. Uh, we don't appreciate that uh, the way we should appreciate it. And in order to avoid stuff like that, when it comes to Fukushima, there's a list of people under my under my videos each day now will give you an alternative view. And you need that because they're not going to give it to you. You're going to give it to the AP and Associate Press. And people say, well, why don't another media come out and counter that rather than us. Well, because if a big story comes out, one of the media counters it, all the other media got to come out and defend that story. See? And that means they have to attack that story. And they're one big happy family. And that can't happen. Because that creates the division and you can't have that. It only has to be Ninian where they'll create the division, where they'll have a produ uh, one of the hosts say something about another host from another broadcast, and then everybody will run over and watch that. And they'll just fluff back and forth, and they'll shake hands and do a charity uh, cyber boxing match, you know, where it's pointless. But it still draws the people in because they, they got drawn into that Ninian. And that's why I say you got to avoid that and then go looking for the information yourself. And that's the quickest, easiest thing to do. Um, only because we have an alternative media. 
that is willing to get out there and lock horns with another narrative, which is the most important thing you can ever have, something you never got in school, something you never got. Um, instilled into us and we don't because we're you no know, TV babysitters or the radio or the, the celebrities or the sports and it drags you out of your re it, dra it keeps you away from your reality that's where you go to get away from your reality is these um, substitutes like as a diver I'm on the ocean floor for six hours a day and, and if something goes wrong nobody can help me but I also got a lot of time to think about things and reflect on things. And many, many years of doing that, uh, over analyzing myself. And then as a um, filmmaker for eight years, I have to analyze myself every day. What I'm saying, how I say it, do I chop, do I have to reshoot? And a lot of those times you gotta shoot 25 times just to get you know, half legible what you're saying because of my heavy accent, etc., etc. And that's a bit of a hindrance when you think about how much work actually has to go into something like that. To the point where I can go for four hours and not swear because I'm trained. I have trained myself not to do that because otherwise I got to go in and chop it out. <laughs> so it's something you evolve to because it's a lot of work, very time consuming. Then you have to hunt down all that information and package it. And you have to bring in the audio and even sound effects sometimes, certainly. And then you have to, you know, get out and hunt down the, the, all the different versions. That was a big thing I used to like to do years ago, and I probably will get back into that soon, is that where you take clips and they all say a sentence, but they all had said the same sentence. And that's a really powerful thing because it's like it's shocking. But all they do is they're teleprompter readers. They're given something, their job is to sell it. And so they can't have a conflict in media of stories because that means they have to attack each other. And so that's why that illusion works so well because they can't do that to each other and everybody gets lulled into that droney, you don't get that, oh, I wonder who they're going to pick on the day kind of routine. Like you would get normally on my site, who's Dana going to come out and try to stomp into today? Um, lock horns with today you know so to speak but it's just a, ref a way of people who can't comprehend why Fukushima and why we are so adamant that this has to come out into a collective where we all can go and deal with it because it's truly that serious when you think about Chernobyl they had to bring in 600 people 600,000 people and they would go in and get their reds in a few minutes radiation you know, yearly doses, lifetime doses, if they were lucky. And they all got a medal, 600,000. Got medals for Chernobyl. And going in, bringing in uh, sand, cement, boric acid. And I think this, uh, Fukushima's ran to around a couple of hundred thousand now, people. They didn't get no medals, I can assure you. And only 30% of Chernobyl had a partial meltdown, see, 30%. And look at what it did, 64 by 64 by 64 miles, uh, 3,800 um, kilometers, rather. Uh, so one, two alone are nothing in Fukushima compared to number three in Fukushima. Number four, number one, and number two is nothing compared to number three in Fukushima. Number three in Fukushima had a, something that the, the media has referred to as a million times more deadly than any other reactor on the planet. So that's a million times worse than Chernobyl. Chernobyl was only a 30% meltdown. And I got the headlines if you want me to sit here all night and read you these headlines from all the media that has, you know, has to come out and counter uh, things and misdirect everybody over to Building 4. And Building 4 probably doesn't exist. We had a 7.3 earthquake 
29 days ago. Yeah, today's 23rd. Happened on the 25th of October, so yeah, 23rd. Yeah, 29 days ago, there was a 7.3. And 10 days before that, there was a 7.2 in Boho, Philippines, which is, doesn't exist anymore. But there was 100,000 houses at that time that got destroyed. Highways got tossed up. But apparently nothing happened in Fukushima outside of an itty bitty tidal wave or tsunami that was uh, just 22 centimeters high, where it, uh, where it has to be uh, three meters to be considered a tsunami warning. And so that was a distraction, just like AP and writers all come out, writers all come out with the same story at the one time, see? <coughs> and so, uh, when you base it upon the entire foundation of that site, was uh, has to be constantly, perpetually loaded with water, and that they had used salt water for the most longest time. And what that does is the sulfur in the salt water does this really stupid thing, where the atoms and the isotopes become structurally bound because of the sulfur and that they can pick up like the uranium or the strontium or the plutonium or the 1300 weaponized isotopes and get them in the center of that and hang them in there and that becomes its own little nuclear reactor and it's atomized um, and so what that does is yes we can't even build a detector to catch that one we don't think because we're talking about MOX fuel, which was a big concoction of probably 1,300 isotopes, most likely for the military weaponized industrial complex, because that's who really truly owned it, was General, Le General Electric's had complete control of Japan has been captured since uh, Nagasaki. The Americans have had <laughs> bases down there and had become democratized, which means all the corporations were able to come in there with human rights, corporate personhood, and take away the solvent of that uh, people and that happens in all democracies right there's no charters it's a corporate personhood and so no one can go to jail so they can be as evil as they want all they can do is get a fine and because they're corporate personhood they put their money in offshore accounts and they don't pay taxes in your state your provinces or your countries but what that too means is that's money to throw away money for the lobbyists and money for bail uh, if they get caught drunk and after murdering a hooker, which they do regularly, um, and then they just pay off the judges with a hundred million dollars, and they walk out of that country with no records, and that has happened. Um, and I know that's a lot to absorb for people, but that's truly what's going on here: is corporate personhood has destroyed the planet, and that was used by the military-industrial machine to destroy this planet, and they've known for the last five decades. The damage that was done and then you have all the lies that we keep hearing about background radiation thrown into this equation that background radiation like bananas like you really truly want to throttle somebody when they say that okay because that's got nothing to do with a weaponized isotope period okay that's indigenous to this planet this background radiation of flying planes that's the biggest fable a professional expert could ever you know ply upon the people that are seeking uh, the truth and just because an expert says it then there's no reason you shouldn't go and check the facts themselves but it's hard to connect those dots in your own head but you just did I'm sure is that background radiation is is uh, the indigenous isotopes which we are acclimated to as a species on this planet with the eight million other species and that uh, the isotopes we're talking about are man-made weaponized isotopes and the dixie cup of this stuff the dixie cup of that stuff will kill everybody in your office in an hour and you can fill that office up or restaurant up or stadium up and do that every day because these isotopes have been created by something that already has a four billion year uh, life on this planet, right? It's taken out of this planet. And it's maintained that. And now it's been weaponized and and because most of of the uranium it, that's what you call yellow cake. See? You can't use it for the atomic bomb, you can't use it for the, the nuclear reactor. 
but you can use it for the 5.5 million bullets you fired in Iraq and Afghanistan every month. And those bullets, those missiles, and those, everything on an A-10 Warthog is a depleted uranium, okay? And they're not tipped, and they're not coded, okay? And so anybody that says that, they don't know what the, they're talking about, see? That's why I don't have to edit too many of my videos. <laughs> it's because I can edit it off before I even say it. But uh, the U.S. military, the crazies, have been firing 5.5 million rounds a month. And most of this is coming out of McAllister's uh, Oklahoma, McAllister's bomb factory. And that's one of four that the NRA, uh, and they all produce only depleted uranium ammunition munitions uh, and make no mistake about it, a lot of these bullets like anything 50 caliber for sure involved is DU the 155 millimeter uh, round tanks are firing are DU and blah 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 I mean just it's like it's the most frightening list you can imagine and so military weapons right now are being made around the depleted uranium bullets that's how messed up this whole friggin nightmare has gotten <laughs> Do you get any idea how crazy that is? And so when you're firing the bullet, that dust, those particles, because it comes, it, it catches fire as soon as it leaves the barrel. So all that trails back to you, particularly if you're, the wind is blowing at you, right? And where you, as a sniper or anything else, that's what you would do, right? You would get the wind. You don't want the, just an old-fashioned thing, but that they still carry to today. And. But 5.5 million bullets a month, each one of them are dirty bombs. Think about that one. That's every month. Go look it up. I mean, that's on the government's website itself. So they contracted to be able to produce 2 billion rounds a year with a new company now. Uh, because they were using so much. They need, you know, they, it was hard to get ammunition. <laughs> How sick, twisted, demented. The people at these uh, depleted uranium factories, they will, uh, you know, you can't stop making depleted uranium bullets. Me and old lady, been there 35 years, we're almost up to pension, right? You know, there's no other job here. Don't kill brown people, what the fuck gonna do? Sorry. Uh, that's, that's what's going through their head, I guess. You know, that's how good uh, Hollywood is and how good the media is, the, pro the, the teleprompter readers are. There you go, that's my cue to go down and check comments. 17 minutes, and if I was just talking to a camera, I'd go on for another hour, and then i go back and edit it all down to three minutes. And it's busy in the comment section. I'm going to be able to keep up with that one until after. Hi, Radchick. There we go. Well, got off to a good start tonight. Anybody don't know who Radchick is, let me embarrass her because I love doing that. And uh, don't look those beer knuckle brawls. Think that only happens for men, folks. This lady here has terrorized me that many times now that I can't, I have a hard time looking at a picture because it brings back all these memories of the video. <laughs> and there's one link below that uh, I can't watch the whole bloody thing. I have to stop. That's how bad that, it's not bad. It's just that, it's just there's so much. I don't know how you get your mind to do that, but I can't do that. But. They got so much info and input going out there, it's just like, ah, like a bang, 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 bang. I'm like, stop, stop, one second and stop. I gotta go team think. Because it brings all these extra pieces of the puzzle, right? When you got the education, like Ratchet got, and then you put your mind to, you know, and then you got the history, you got Nuke Radio and all that other stuff that it's, it's never, and then on top of that, coming over to these chat rooms and getting in on that. Unbelievable. You can have you can have my account anytime you want to ride chick and go blast on to the community out there. Let me know all you do is set up Wirecast on your site, on your computer. I'll make a little video for you if you need it. Which will probably make more sense for you for sure because that's a hard one to learn. But yeah, you can take over the chat room the video anytime you want. I got to learn how to bring people into this is what I got to really get 
my ass on too uh, because there's so many people out there that I can bring in and it doesn't matter if they don't want to use the camera you can still bring in the audio see you can just throw up a picture and I should be able to figure that out and then make a little videos and send it out to whoever wants to do it to help them make it so they don't go through what I went through because how many <laughs> 24 attempts for me to get this to work that wow, was crazy let me keep going got a hundred watching Woo! yeah folks you know it's 29 days since that earthquake it's 989 or something 80 days did someone said December the 6th was 1000 days that uh, that Gert Big thing down there in La La Land that uh, where they got the most slaves on the planet right now is in Japan there's 200 million slaves down there I'm sure there are all these people. I apologize. I like to apologize to them all, but they won't open up the internet, which is kind of good too. Because if they see my video that I made last night, they might not like me, and I can't blame them. And that video I could have last night. I could, by the way, folks, I could put that. I could have went on for an hour, but I just couldn't do it. I didn't have the heart. I don't have that heart. I really wanted to though. If I, I should have flipped everything just over Tepco employees only, and I probably would have been okay. But. Every time I say the word Japanese people, I understand how wrong, stupid it is for me to say that. But it's supposed to be a joke, and it's supposed to be rude, and just, I just don't feel right about it, unfortunately. I'm not the old Dana I used to be. <laughs> the point being, there's 200 million people down there. And we like to hear what they got to say. We want to hear their stories, like the man with the horses. This is an amazing story. That... He's certainly not going to kill his horses, and the man with the cows is not going to kill his cows, and that he's going to feed them and let them have their lives. Um, it's a fitting story, you know? It's surreal. Um, but there's so many stories that have to come out of there at some point, and because there's something desperate we can't understand, but we can comprehend because we do our maths and we get self-educated and informed properly. We don't, we don't go down the road of conjectures without backing it up with a whole bunch of, a litany of reasons why we took that particular path, right? Go where the path is least worn and you'll get the most fruits, the most berries, the most herbs. This is something my grandmother, my great-grandmother taught me a long, many time, a long time ago. And that lady never sat in a car in her life, never seen a car. Um, and so, so it's those kind of things when you think about it that you have to take when you're trying to source something out. So you start off with something small and then you go and you learn everything you can about it. And then along that way you're going to pick up all kinds of other little treasures. Or just go read uh, the vocabulary on a topic. You know, all the terminology that's involved in that particular topic. And don't just take one source. That's the whole problem, right? You've got to take every source you can get your hands on. You've got to eat it like candy. Literally. I can guarantee you that's what uh, Ratchik does. It's a, just a voracious appetite. Because there's so much. <laughs> there's just an inconceivable amount. By the way, uh, her link is below uh, the video, folks. Let me come over and grab some of uh, the questions, just in case. Let me see if I can do it. I'm supposed to be able to do it on this computer instead of doing that great big lean. And that, let's kill that. And if I'd done all my... Oh, we did so. Cracked 100. Yeah, there you go. So that might work for me. Oh, hang on. I'll get that. That's a little rough. Hi, Janet. Hi, Aunt T. Kelly. Aloha. Are you in uh, Hawaii, Auntie Kelly? Because I was just reading that article. Wait, I'll bring it up. Hi, Benny. El Salvador. I just want to bring up, an, uh, there's a link under the, under my videos to E&E &E News. And one of their top stories today is uh, Tepco Advisor 925 quadrillion Beckwolds, which is disintegrations of contaminated water from trying to cool the melted Fukushima cores 
in the first few months, first few months, months, Agenda 21. Hey, cockroach, how's it going, bud? You out there pounding and grounding, I see. You're a good one, you are. I'm very proud of people like you, man. You don't take no for an answer. Tevco has no idea where the fuel is. Gee, what the... You know, how many times have we heard this denied in the media? See? Because once again, if only 30% of Chernobyl was the meltdown, why do they call it the worst one in, in history? Well, because if they come out and tell the truth, everybody's going to say, well, why did you tell us that other story for 989 days, you know? Is that correct? And now that was only the first three months. So let's think about that one. Just a, just a few months. And how many months are gone by again? Let's divide that by a few months. <laughs> and then do the, the quadrillions. But that's, uh, we're not talking about the plutonium, the strontium, the unbelievable, extraordinary long life of the deadliest thing imaginable, the uranium. Even though plutonium is just the frightening thing on the planet, but there's so much uranium on that side. Remember they were getting 30, um, 30 tons of waste, anyway, minimum, of that rods every month. So how many months was that in operation? Do the math on that. And you come close to how many tons was on that site. It's not like they were shipping it out of there, okay? That's what these sites are. You can't even get insurance on these sites. These are, by definition, a nuclear waste site. As soon as you crank, uh, crank the big uh, start motor over, <laughs> there's no turning back. And uh, Radchick's going to use big words I can't pronounce. Oh, so you want to play like that, do you? I know a few words of my own. Just can't say them. <laughs> I don't know that word, but I can kind of figure out what you're saying. Hey, Jester. A. Michael Harris. He shows up. Cockroach says, check out uh, mutations. Watch. Right, 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 right. Um, Radchick got that mutation watch, man. See? That's pretty brilliant. Hi, Miss Milky the Clowns. We see you. Hello. We always treat you special. You know that. I blast the hippie. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to keep up with that again at night. I had a lot of fun, though, reading those. You guys leave some pretty good comments. And even the chatter when you, because I'm coming down, so I'm going up, and it's hard to figure out who's chattering. And then as you get up, you realize, oh, oh yeah, there's this one there. <laughs> Miss Milky the Clown. Now, Miss Milky the Clown don't know where the fuel is told. We're in trouble, okay? Because that was the one person I was hoping would actually know where the fuel is told, who's been at this for so long. Darn. I've been looking for it on Miss Milky the Clown original site, see? Your original site for that. Where did the fuel go? It went all the way down. So it's built into the uh, plan of these uh, plants, is that. They put a 100 foot of topsoil there, and then they built all these facilities on the top of it. And they do this with all these plants, where they put in this foundation so that the core can get it way down. They can stay on the site because it's 100 feet down. And the ocean comes in and fills it up. Or the river, a natural river that's running out underneath it, is their, one of the preferred spots, will push it into an ocean. And then all that water they're pouring on it, that goes right down there and gets swept back out. But at the same time, it's running over those three cores, otherwise they wouldn't even be on that site. Otherwise that site would be supernova. See, we got suns on this planet and there's three of them. And what, what's going on is that if the water wasn't going on that over that, it would eat up all the rocks and soil and it would eat on down towards Argentina. But by keeping all that water on it, it's not going to just start re into the big major fuss again. But because there's so much heat, and we don't really know 100% of all three of them have made it down there, because there might have been enough water underneath it and around it to hold it and slow it down. And so that's why all that heat is coming out of there. Something magic going on there, because those things should be well underway down to Argentina. And... Um, you know, the media says it's uh, Fukushima's the second worst nuclear accident. You know, no, the phone, the, the, there's no stutter in your camera that time. It's just, I wanted to scream, and I can't because the microphone's right there. Um, hi, Albert. 
pole smokers by the time you bit, but uh, moment, not nothing, moments, nothing more. Yeah. If you're fat, will it help or just have longer to melt you? Well, you need to be healthy to fight off what's coming at you. And Ratchet got some really good advice. Um, but you need you need that dandelion root tea because it's the quickest way to get all those nutrients and minerals into your body. You ever hear tell you if you eat liver, it's a complete meal? Dandelion is so much better. So much better. So much more healthy. Higher fat content in milk has less rads other than no idea. Uh, yeah, no, it's... Uh, well, milk is bad because uh, extrontium goes to the bone, right? And it causes all these white blood cells to come out uh, from your spleen and all the joints. <coughs> uh, so, and that's, a, that's apparently it's a really bad combination. It's like milk and cheese. And radiation attacks little children, folks. And if you've got little daughters, or, or it, it attacks them and attacks pregnant women's uh, fetuses and themselves. And the breast milk becomes very heavy. Uh, it gets come, like it comes into your body also through the breast milk. And so uh, Mayor Bloomberg, creepy Bloomberg, tried to mandate everybody in New York City has to... All the women have to breastfeed their children. A little Nazi. Um, uh, Miss Milky the Clowns, Totten Albert, I gotta catch up. Hi, Anna William. News Eye, Totten the News Eye, okay. News Eye, that's a dumb question. Okay, yes. The latest regurgitation to keep us mes mesmerizes back to JFK, yeah. Yeah, because Biden comes out, and I don't think uh, so you shot him all by yourself. I mean, how does. Biting even tie his own shoes is anybody's guess. Okay, um, the chat room's going crazy, so I'll just keep, I'll just find something like, to go off here until somebody comes out, something or catches. I can't keep up with uh, that. Okay, hang on. Let me get back on track here. Something else I wanted to bring up. I'll come back into the comments. Because there's, you can get lost just watching the comments. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing, actually. Uh, I'm grateful. Make no mistake about it. Just reading it after is so much fun. Uh, I pick up so much, and I remember so much because everybody's clicking. You know, um, November the seventh, two thousand and thirteen. CNN said, "How do you remove molten fuel?" in melted down reactors wow uh the technology does not exist to remove that uh, molten fuel folks uh and they got that there and they say the radiation levels in reactor one two and three are so high that the area is inaccessible to humans inaccessible to humans super survival island i like it oh someone bashing smoky oh. Um, <laughs> I try to keep up with that one. What about raw milk? Well, raw milk, you can go get off the plane in France and they got actually raw milk machines there and you take your bottles and you get your raw milk and the farmers are there putting more milk in it and you can talk to them. Totally legal. Get on the plane, fly back to Canada, they'll arrest you when you get off the plane freaking assholes it's because they put all these uh, bovines and adjutants uh, in the cows to make them grow faster and then they also because uh, remember those reporters got fired they, they chopped their documentary uh, something like 39 times over two years and then they found, tried to pay them off and then they finally fired them um, I won't go down that road but well it's going to be better than stuff you're buying but remember what I told you about breast milk uh, the radiation, uh, apparently for females that are lactating, the, the radiation got a tendency to congregate in the breast, and so the milk itself would be radiated because the radiation, a lot of this radiation uh, stays, and that's why you're getting so much breast cancer. And by the way, folks, uh, a recent study just came out, 
a week ago or something, was all breast cancer is ionized radiation, folks. All breast cancer. That's a very interesting thing, isn't it? Uh, okay. <laughs> Miss Mulkey is laughing at a Tommy cockroach. Stephen's laughing at something. Mark is laughing. Um, I'll get that joke later, I guess. Elvis says 9,000 degree Fahrenheit. That's right, in the pits of hell. Auntie says, Dana, many of our Japanese friends even have a hard time getting info. That's right, about what's going on. And it's knocked off the page again. Two pages, three pages. Oh, let me see if I can catch it. I think that they're afraid to respond to me online because they don't want to get in trouble. One thousandth of one percent of the Japanese population's Twitters and Facebook and YouTubes and everything else are actually getting out there at best. And so they probably got... Look at how they track you with your smartphone and so they know everything about you. And so they probably got the algorithms looking for people that just don't mention Fukushima ever or just totally benign and then let them slip out there and see how that goes and see if anybody comes in tell us about Fukushima, tell us about Fukushima. Uh, which would probably be someone like me uh, so I lost track anyway or did I okay he <laughs> was panties in Japan <laughs> that's a bad one I was a naughty boy last night Give me, hopefully somebody will chop that up and use it against me down the road so that'll get that'll give me ammunition is all I'm really trying to do there I probably won't be so lucky but you got to give me some ammunition when everything I got right now is uh, you know kindling for the fire so to speak that they don't they, they want to put out the stuff I put out last night is the water for that fire in their eyes and hopefully they grab that and someone don't understand it and they come over to one of my videos and I get the first 10 minutes in under head before they get a chance to realize, uh oh, this guy's going to indoctrinate the shit out of me. And it's too late then because I already got ya. I'm always quick on the draw in the first 10 or 15 minutes because I knows people in the future and different places that first 10 minutes, you're, it's all over, man. You got no resistance left behind you. And then if you hang around and reach for the comment section, you're having a bit of fun, and then you're learning like the devil. I can, it's like a machine, hopefully, for educating people and giving them in, in a decent context. And then there's all the people underneath my video that are so important that you have all these alternative... Uh, and like I say, you know, just before I got here, I was laughing. I mean, I was howling with laughter at uh, Thomas Ackerman's latest video. He scared the shit out of me. Uh, which is okay about 13 minutes into it, but then I had to come on to here, so I'll catch the rest of it after. But I was having some pretty good fun. He's a good, he's an artist, he's very uh, entertaining, and he mixes it up, he's all acting, right? That's what he's doing there. I mean, he means what he's saying, don't get me wrong, he's not stupid, but it's important that people like that, yeah, you, go, you can use that too, because that humor and that dead seriousness, I don't really do enough of it. And he's really good at it. Okay, just broke last night, 109 with the 112. Oh, yeah, somebody else mentioned earlier about uh, oh, Dana about raw milk. Amazing. Yeah, no, it is. I know. Yeah, I would love to hear the Japanese. No, I would never want to hear the Japanese translation of last night's video. I should, If I had to use Tefco employees for everything, I would have felt so much better today. I feel like I got a hangover after doing that video. Radchick says, I saw an ancient alien show with Busby, but now I can't find it. Yeah, Busby, uh, Ackerman tore him apart six or seven hours ago. Hi, Camshaft. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Yeah, well, you can always turn my sound off and just read through the comments and put some music on because there's pretty funny stuff going on there. Yeah, Busby, I, I you know, he's good. At least he's getting something out there, but he's he's scrubbing so much. And it's misdirections, misleading, talking about how the atomic tests... That's a different radiation than the radiation that's hemorrhaging in, out. So it's like a million gallons a minute has to go over those cores. They can't even get on that site, folks. 
and it's designed, it's built that way for the ocean to come in or a river, a natural indigenous river. But all the rods that are in the earth itself, you know, every time it rains, all these isotopes are getting washed down to the riverbed, getting washed out to the ocean. And then the ocean gets whisked right away from their coastline. That's why they only go a couple of miles offshore, because that's where the Pacific brine starts, right off their shoreline. And the radiation gets out and gets sucked right off. It's like a back eddy, right? Uh, that it, in one sense, you know what a back eddy is? Uh, probably not. Well, you go along the coastline, there's these little spots, and they have a strong current on one side of them that's always drying. It's like a draw for a fire. You know how a fire got a little draw in the back so, to, so it, can, it can get all that air? But it also acts in the ocean. It, it, it's like a draw, so you get a really strong current, but it's not much of a current in there, but there's a big volume. And so these little draws are actually sucking all that volume out, and they're very deep. And that's what China is like. That's what the Pacific brine, that's why it does that there. It's a very dangerous spot to swim, let's put it that way. Because it'll drag you right across the Atlantic Ocean. 111 watching, wow. Woohoo, we're rocking. You want me to do a little jig for everybody? <laughs> I'm sorry. There goes, there goes 100. <laughs> no, just kidding. Okay, look. <coughs> In a stream, my stream refreshed, fresh, Stephen. Yeah, how you're a prop. You're a prop. <laughs> you left a comment on my video last night. Seven hours and I don't get a live stream, but there was a countdown timer on it. Just give me your phone number, I'll phone you. I don't care where you're to, I'll phone you every time just for a go on here. I'll make you feel better. You send me your phone number, I'll make sure you don't miss another one. I'll tell Google not to give you that countdown timer because you can't work it out. But you send me your phone number, and I'll definitely, <laughs> definitely get on the ball. Hi, Carol. Now, there's no lakes because you can get it after. <laughs> Sorry, you're a prophet. Just, I gotta do shit like that with you once in a while anyway. You've been around for quite a few years. No harm, no harm banging away at you. Hi, Mom and Ox. I seen your comment there, but I can't remember. I'm having a little bit of fun there. Look, Chernobyl is 30%. Fukushima is 100 in Unit 1. So that's three times worse than Chernobyl. So let's forget about two, three, four, five, and six. Oh, five and six, we don't talk about that very much, do we? Wonder why, right? And so the pictures they're showing us, well, let's bring that up then, why don't we? Sorry, just give me a second, because I haven't used it. And let me explain to anybody that I don't really understand. First off, um, I had a blog come out and call me out for that picture you're looking at and they said uh, that that was just garbage and they were right uh, the Japanese in 1944 sent balloons right across the ocean in three days not six right you go look it up on Wikipedia and look at all the states uh, let me run up to that for a second so anybody can after they can stop the video and see all those names there uh, well that's where all the balloons landed so those entire counties and states are loaded with strontium, plutonium, uranium, cesium, all the family tree of that stuff. And how did they end up back up there? Oh, yeah, I want to show you that. Okay, so look at this. You see that there? No pools, okay? You see any pools? Anybody see a pool? Do you think a pool? The pools were all on top of that, right? And the pools are, uh, say, 34 feet wide and 28 feet deep and 30 feet long or something um, and that was full of special water hard water so that the zirconian cases didn't become compromised uh, because uh, if they released gases they had big these big 700 foot stacks chimneys alongside them that were broken when you during the earthquake but they had those stacks in order to vent off these gases but actually they prefer to vent the gases out into the ocean because if they vent off those types of gases they might have a whole bunch of dead people in Fukushima in, in the next 10 or 20 minutes and that's not going to be very good for nuclear power so they secretly and knowingly everybody who looks for it will find out that they actually all got pipes running into the ocean to vent. The chimneys are just, they use them, don't get me wrong, but they, they vent most of it out into the ocean, certainly all the spills, certainly, uh, you can't get in and work on certain parts 
once you have an issue. And so, like, uh, Hanford down here, you can't get in there and work on these places. Like, these, uh, I can't remember the proper name, classifications, where they're going to take uh, yellow cake and they're going to put it in glass, right? Uh, liquid glass, and then let it cool down. It'll be trapped inside this glass. It's a classification, it's, uh, for lack of a better word. And then they're going to take the glass, because it doesn't leak and everything, allegedly, and they'll be able to take it to Yukon Mountain or some mountain that doesn't, doesn't have an earthquake zone. But the problem is, once you build that place, you can never get in there and change a fitting or a hose or a motor or anything like that because these places uh, become incredibly toxic. And it's impossible to stop this stuff from leaking. And another big problem with all these tanks and why they really do leak is because when you're filling them up with all this yellow cake sludge now, you got all these plutonium, strontium, um, cesium, and uranium all mixing together, and they actually burn themselves down through the floors of these things. And these sites can never be decontaminated because it's into hundreds of miles of the water tables anyway. See? And that shows up everywhere. And they have a really good system because they own the system of controlling how much information about that comes out. And But as you look at these places, you know, like 500 miles of Hanford, they got 2 billion gallons dumped directly on the ground. There's 41 miles of open pit with full of yellow cake. And the Dixie Cup will kill everybody in the restaurant every hour for a billion years. They got Sellafield, where there's 8 million liters a day coming out into that ocean. They got uh, 45,000 barrels, with 50% of them have breached uh, yellow cake, uh, which is, you know, the, the concoction of the most toxic stuff conceivable that's supposed to be locked up according to all the experts don't worry we're going to lock it all up in a sarcophagus that we haven't figured out how to build yet for a million years and let that generation figure out what to do with it because we don't want it to get out and we're going to put it in the sarcophagus but they never do see they dump it into the ground they dump it into the ocean they release it into the communities and they're terraforming the planet with radiation and the mutation watch that Radchik has is so important. It documents so much of these things, but the science behind it is very straightforward. Where uh, I think the uranium, if you get a uranium, it's beaten off uh, 500 becquels a second. Versus the ones they want to tell you about in all the interviews are the short life, eight days for the iodine. You know, shut up. I mean, there's 1,300 weaponized isotopes. Tell us about them. Don't tell me about the one that's going to disappear in an hour. And that's not very many of them will do that. Most of them are not going anywhere for a couple of million years. But they only want to talk about the ones with the short, the 137 or something with a 29-year life. And that's really scary, man. That's 29 years. That's a long time. And even if that's what it was, that would be okay. But with all that hemorrhaging out into the ocean, filling up the ocean, becoming plumes... And the plume doesn't leave any oxygen behind. And at some point in the next couple of years, the whole ocean will be the big, uh, an entire plume. And so I went to show you that. Look, see that? That's what they say is looks like inside of that building. But that's probably, this one here is probably a, four, a five or six. It's certainly not going to be four. Computer's a bit slow. That's what the pool looks like, see? And they never went in there and picked it all up because when that exploded, and there's three of these exploded, there was shrapnel from all those pools that are missing in that picture. Shrapnel went from two miles. And anything close to it got hammered by these rods, these 1,500-pound bundles of rods, of 60 rods and 1,500 12-foot bundles, thereabouts. And so when they hammered into building four over and over and over, the rods broke off and went in there, they were probably, and then caught fire, the zirconium burnt off dead, and, and then building four filled up with gases. If it didn't break the pool and go dry, which we don't know, right? But we do know what it looks like. And the color you're seeing is emblematic of the neutrons, certain types of uh, nuclear uh, fusion neutrons, which, which was an indication that there was actually a fusion. Well, there was certainly burning going on in the pool. That was probably from the zirconium and then the rods, the pellets themselves, the rods were made up of pellets, and they got a zirconium coating, but zirconium will burn if it goes dry. Those pools were all cracked, and that's why they're pumping all that water in there. 
And when it, and uh, I know some people might say it looks like a tarp, but if you actually go and look up these pictures, you'll see all the wires hanging down. And so, yeah, it might get an illusion because it's a small picture. But if you look at the big picture, you don't... Plus, you can see down into the pool too, right? So you can't see it through a tarp. But why would you put a tarp over it, see? Uh, but I, I can understand, right, trepidation when you see stuff like that. And I was, I'm always looking for doctored photos where they put people into the photo because a person can't get in there because uh, when these buildings went off, you can see the damage from all the rods hitting it and then having an explosion. But this is one of the buildings that went off, went off like a firecracker, okay? And all the rods, all the poles above it, they went flying somewhere. Where did they go? Some of them went up to two miles away. And so anything close to it got... Just and now at the same time, you got a tsunami back in editor, Ugh, the concoction of hell. But anyway, these cores have melted down. That's three million gallons a minute, fourteen hundred forty minutes in a day, nine hundred eighty nine days. You got four point three billion gallons a day just going over the cores. And one of them is a million times worse than Chernobyl. Okay, so you're gonna have to get used to the concept that radiation is common. And it's going to be really bad. And if you don't protect yourself and think ahead by using currents and winds and jet streams and go trying to find places where it's not going to be as bad, but you can't escape it because you're going to carry, it's carried all around the troposphere. Because as these rods and earthquakes are happening, that building releases more rods when there's an earthquake. And so the rods go down there, they hit a 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperature, it gets aerosoled. And, you know, it would be nice to have a six day warning. But because the jet streams are traveling at 100 miles an hour, and because the jet streams are relentless, they go across the Pacific, uh, 5,400 miles to our coastline, and then California probably gets it. Certain jet streams will get to California before it gets to us, but they'll circle around our back door and then come out and land on our head. But California is getting hammered. Uh, all those states I showed you earlier are getting hammered. Let me come over and say hi to a few people. There you go, Radchick put a, a, a link there, and I'll get that after and stick it under the video, folks. Um, just in case you can't find her comment, because I love stuff like that. And thanks for the thanks for the message last night, Radchick, because, yeah, I'm interested in all that. All kinds of new, uh, somebody archived all kinds of stuff. I'm like, yeah, I want it all. <laughs> I want it all. Um, hi, News Eye, Stephen, Lunar. How are we doing, folks? Mark, Char, split wood, not atoms. There you go. <laughs> split wood, not atoms. I like it. Hi, freelance. One in the mix more than Chernobyl. One million more than Chernobyl factor come from? That's a great question. Well, for starters, Chernobyl was 30%, right? And building three, which had mox fuel. So you got to go look up to mainstream media. And that was a concoction of uh, hundreds of different uh, man-made weaponized isotopes and uh, particles, I should say, particulates, put together to create this MOX fuel. Because think about what, think about what these rods are. They're all pellets, right? Uh, just little tiny pellets that are packed with uranium, with you know these concoctions, and probably compressed and everything else too. Not to a point where you get a temperature, because but then they have to be coated with this zirconian, and so they got this combination that is actually, like you said, there's 4,200 peer review academic studies published every day, and then they're locked away, right? So it's not like I can go out and just get my hands on all these academic peer review studies, and this type of uh, technology is not something you're going to get your hands on anyway, you know, unless Obama signs off on it. Right? He usually signs his uh, papers, he kisses it, he puts lipstick on it, he kisses it, and that's his signature. He was like Bush, holding the hands with uh, Tony Blair all the time. Oh, watch now, it's like 10 seconds. We're, okay, i got to go looking for it. Oh, I'll find a rat chick, hang on. I think you're talking. Dun, 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 dun. Can't find your comment. 115 people on the stream? Good stuff. I'll get it if I can find your comment, uh, right Chick. There you go. Yeah, no. Uh, didn't work. Someone jumped it. 
I'm gonna have to come in after, I guess. Damn it. Yeah, because when someone comments to him, my comment section goes flying down. I can take a screen capture, but then I gotta type all that stuff in. I'm gonna try it one more time, see if I can get it. If I can get it, I'll check. Oh, oh, okay. And there's a, like a 30 second delay. Oh, I'm not gonna get it. I got you. Bingo. Oh yeah, I got it. Here we go. 10 second video, give me give me, give me, me 15 seconds. I'm just pasting. Not as quick as I was eight years ago. Okay, here we go. Dun, dun. Cinema 4D marbles falling. That was um, interesting. Okay. I lost track. I don't know. I don't know. Hang on. I'll get it after, I guess. I can't keep up with it. So, you just sometimes. That's okay. I'll get them all after and I'll catch up again here in a minute. Europrop. They had that way before Fuki. Okay, let me go. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're talking about Mox Fuel in building three. And so media has reported that Mox Fuel was a million times worse when this all happened originally, so they can't get rid of those clips. Um, lots of scientists have repeated that. Of course, that was a uh, that was a big headline when that first came out. Everybody had mentioned it, which was really unusual, I think, because nobody mentions it anymore. But a lot of media had covered that. Remember how big of a story that actually was? And But anyway, every time there's an earthquake... Rods fall down, and three, four, five days later, those death plumes are landing on our coastline, folks. And we're supposed to be locked up inside our homes. They're supposed to bring us food and water and uh, pop and peanuts and everything else. And you're not allowed outdoors because all these things come in, uh, radiation that's coming towards you. In a perfect world, that's what would happen. In our world, if that happened, I think that would be the most terrifying thing imaginable because they probably would never let you out. And you just can't trust the system, and it can't do their job anyway. Eighty percent of babies born in Fallujah are deformed because of all the depleted uranium. There's no uh, born with no eyes, no mouth, no nose, no ears, no face, no arms. Just eighty percent of all the babies are hit are hideously. I shouldn't say those words, but uh, what are you supposed to say? Right there. And just imagine trying to take care of a child like that. Trying to do your best your entire life and worrying that who's going to take care of that child when you're gone. Having to live with that burden on top of it. We don't have to Vietnam. There's 3,000 children down there because of Agent Orange just living that nightmare. And Fallujah's like that. All of, all of Afghanistan. I mean, there's 5 million orphans in Afghanistan. We're just a bucket of evil, you know, this society that we live in, it's not us personally, but it's this hideous myth methodical machine out there that takes those 4,200 peer review academic journals and tries to work out ways they can be evil. It's the bizarrest thing you can imagine, but it's actually truly like that because that's what they're doing. And because you can't read it, you don't know what's happening, right? And you say, oh, you know, show me a peer review study, but a lot of people don't understand there's 4,200 every day, Wiley Springer and Elsevier are the three biggest ones. And they get all those peer review academic studies from our institutions for free. They get the copyrights on them. The people that are writing them a lot of times can't even tell their friends or families or sh certainly show it to them without paying a large amount of money. And depending on how good it is, you gotta realize a lot of these studies are using multi-million dollars worth of equipment, if not for funding, Thousands of man hours, student hours, your loved ones are used as slaves for free, for the academic glory. And they need to kill us off because we're going to use up all the resources and they need those resources to get to other planets. That's the way they see it. Or they just can't stand us anyway. They don't need us anymore. They've locked up 4,200 peer review studies a day. There's three a minute, 1,000 page studies that you paid for. Your taxes paid for those universities, those institutions. So why is Wiley Springer and elsewhere got the keys and lock all that up for free? 
and then reap all that money, all those dividends. So the shareholders are big players. You know, we we don't get that. We don't think about that. And can that change what we know now? Certainly, certainly, 100%. See? How long have I been screaming for, folks? Hang on, I'll go check. Let me go check it all out. Oh, crap, 117 just keeps climbing. 59 minutes, and this stream is almost over, folks. Let me wind her down. I'll say hi to a few people. We don't want it to go too long. I got enough gruesome stuff into this video. Uh, plus, a lot of good stuff in there. And got all these crazy comments I got to get to right after this comes up. Say hi to Mama Knock. Hi, Mama Knock. Ben 8. Europrop. Auntie. Albert. Carl. Stephen, Andrew, News Eye, I'll catch everybody after. Junkyard Flyer. Um, just trying to see how a few people. Lynn of Earl, Grey Rose Tint. Hey, bud, girl, friend. And I'll get, yeah, I'm going to have to get everybody's comments after. We, we hit the hour. Rad Chick, of course. Folks, her link is below. Miss Milky, Nuber Magic, uh, Thomas Ackerman. Oh God! I got more. I got a, a Susan's down there. I watched uh, Kevin's Blanche's recent video, 16-minute video, just before I watched Tom Sackerman's video. Radchick said, "When he pulled the rods out, that's my impression of fuel pellets." Oh yeah, okay. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah, because like, I'm <laughs> so many comments. Oh my. I'm trying to read your comment. This is pretty funny. So I'm lucky, right? I'm just so lucky that so many people comment because that really, that always like, I always get like this laugh all of a sudden, like I'm like, oh, and then all of a sudden all the kind of, so. It makes it easier to do these one hour, you know, pound and grind, but it's always fun too, right? Yeah, thanks, Albert. Okay, so folks, I'm not gonna bother trying to say goodbye to everybody. Miss Milky, of course. Her links is on there, folks. And I'll catch everybody tomorrow night for day 30. And I'm just laughing at the comments. You folks are awesome. Well, I'll be reading them in a few minutes when she re-renders. We'll see folks tomorrow night. And that's the best I can do for everybody. So we'll 